Sonic the Hedgehog has been around for quite some time. Later in the year, he will be celebrating his 25th birthday. I am personally a really big fan of the Sonic series, so I thought it would be a good idea to look back on his past games. My friend Rabbit Platypus, also known as Mightyson, is already doing a look back on the 16-bit console games, so I thought it would be a good idea to take a look back on the 8-bit games. Today we are looking at Sonic the Hedgehog for the Master System. Sonic MS, that's what I'm going to call it, is an 8-bit version of Sonic the Hedgehog. It was the first 8-bit Sonic platformer, something that Sonic has excelled at on the Master System and Game Gear. Usually. Sonic MS plays slower compared to its 16-bit counterpart. The game still gives you a great sense of speed and control. Something that I actually like better about Sonic MS is the slopes. Sonic 1, sometimes in order to go up slopes, you have to walk back and then start running in order to gain enough momentum. I only encountered this type of slope in Sonic MS once or twice, and even when I did, there's a nice modification of physics. You can jump up slopes. Sometimes I'm willing to sacrifice realism for speed. Except for this. Physics overall do feel nice. I do feel there aren't enough rolling uphill spots though. There's only a few in the whole game. Also notably absent are loops. This might be why the game feels slower, as you don't feel like you're going fast without something like a loop or a corkscrew. I think I've talked enough about the physics, though. Let's move on to the actual zones. First, we have Green Hill Zone. Remember that one Sonic game where the first level was great, and then the rest sucked? This game has the opposite problem. Now, don't get me wrong. The level isn't bad. It's just... disappointing. Picture this. You just bought Sonic MS. What's the first level? A downsized level from the Genesis version. Everything about it feels downsized. There's not much going on in the background. It's really linear. Heck, even the enemies are smaller. The next act is much better at showing what this game can do. In the next act, you fall into the caves of Green Hill. They're apparently mazes. The springs. I don't think I learned that in science class. What makes this section of Green Hill great is it shows what the Master System version is all about. Exploration and platforming. There are some really neat platforming sections that are hard to find in the Genesis version, and exploring caves to find goodies like more rings and a Chaos Emerald makes your exploration feel worthwhile. Yes, you did hear me say a Chaos Emerald. In Sonic MS, you find Chaos Emeralds throughout the zone. It's kind of like a precursor to finding the giant rings. I really like this, as it encourages exploration throughout all of the zones instead of just going fast in a straight line, unlike a certain game I mentioned earlier. After Act 2, you make it to the boss act, and there's no rings. There's no rings? That's kind of harsh. I mean, the least that Sega could have done is giving you a shield. But nope. This isn't fair difficulty. This is fake difficulty. If you could take one hit, most of the bosses in this game would still be challenging. But no, they just had to pad the game out. Anyway, this, the first Sonic boss is, like, the second easiest boss of all time. Robotnik just comes down and charges at you. He doesn't even get invincibility when he charges. Why did I say second easiest? Take a look at the Game Gear port of Sonic MS. That's right, because of the screen crunch, you can actually hit the boss straight away. This is the main reason I'm reviewing the Master System version. I ain't dealing with no screen crunch. The next zone. Oh, the next zone. The next zone is where the game really begins to shine. Rage Zone focuses on the aforementioned platforming. It also feels much more lively than Green Hill Zone, and the music is definitely a step up in from just a remix. Okay, so Bridge Zone Act 1 is kind of linear, but because of the platforming and a tiny bit of exploration, it still feels like a solid level. Bridge Zone 2 has something that was never seen before in a Sonic game, an auto scroll level. The level design in this section is actually really freaking clever. You risk going back to the left to get that extra life, or should you keep moving forwards? Moments like these make this act shine. Now to the boss. Okay. Next. Jungle Zone is next, and jeez, the first act is great. There's so much to explore in this level. There's a bunch of platforming. There's also fun and fair level design. And whoever thought to put the Chaos Emerald in its location, you're a genius. I'm not gonna spoil it. Jungle Zone Act 2. 
That's a different story. I like what the zone tries to do. It's a vertically scrolling upwards level. I can dig that. If the collision worked. I mean, look at that. I totally landed on that platform. I do give it props for having this extra life, though. That's actually really clever. But the rest of this zone can die. Next up is the boss. Remember when I said the ability to take a hit would make bosses more fair? This is what I'm talking about. If you could take a hit, this boss would be great. But the inability to take a hit makes it feel really, really cheap. It takes a while to learn all the patterns, and the ability to take a hit would have made it much easier to learn it. Jungle Zone might be my least favorite zone in the game, which is kind of sad. Because of the boss of Act 2, this game is stripped of what could be the best Sonic level ever. Act 1 is probably my favorite act in the whole game. The music is also great and the graphics look amazing. Oh well. Next zone. Remember the second worst zone from Sonic 1? Yes, Marble Zone is the worst zone. You ever think, what if someone actually made the second worst zone fun? That's what this game did. Introducing the new and improved Labyrinth Zone. There's a lot of room to explore, the zone actually feels like a labyrinth. There's less air bubbles, which makes it more difficult, but they're still in favorite locations. The Chaos Emerald's location is, again, really freaking clever. The music is also really great. The Genesis game makes you feel like you're being attacked by a bad guitar player. This game makes you feel like you're having fun while exploring this cave. The graphics are good too, much better than this game's version of Green Hill Zone. The boss is... A pattern you need to learn. Why is every boss in this game like that? Anyways, time for the next zone. Scrap Brain Zone. The first act isn't too special, as it feels like the console. Unlike Green Hill Zone, though, it doesn't feel like a knockoff. I can't really explain why, but it just doesn't. Maybe it's because the graphics are more interesting. Act 1 also has this extra life box, which is really clever. Like, seriously, wow. Act 2 is interesting. It's arranged like a maze. There's puzzle solving elements, which don't involve slowly pushing a block, that are required in order to advance through. This makes for a very out of the box Sonic level, if you having to think ahead. This might be the one stage where I don't like the Chaos Emerald location though. It's inside a pit, next to another pit, which is also a bottomless pit. So how am I supposed to assume that the pit I fall through, that the Chaos Emerald is in, isn't a bottomless pit? That's just stupid. Anyways, after this act, there's the boss. There's no boss? Just this stupid maze? Why do I think this is so stupid? Because I just went through a maze! This feels like a lazy rehash. You can't die either, where's the fun or challenge in that? But once you make it to the end, you see Robotnik taking an elevator. For some reason, he sends it back down, so you fall into Sky Base Zone. Base is hard. That's all I have to say. Now the final boss. The final boss is another pattern you have to learn. It's also a pretty difficult pattern. I can't imagine having to learn this pattern legitimately. Like, without save states or something. You'd have to use continues over and over again. Continues? It's time for out of play section! If you collect 50 rings and make it to the end of an act, you get transported to a bonus stage for goodies like continues, rings, and extra lives. These bonus stages are fun and feel like this game's version of Spring Guard Zone. Back to the final boss. You beat Robotnik, he transports away, you follow him, you defeat him, Chaos Armor and save the island, blah 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 blah, the end. Sonic and Mask was a lot of fun to play through, but I can only recommend it under certain conditions. Because of the bosses, I can only recommend this game if you get a version, or like, use an emulator, that is saving. Then you can memorize the boss patterns without wasting 30 extra minutes of your life. Besides the bosses, there's not much negative criticism I can say about this game. Sonic and Mask is a fun game with good physics, interesting graphics, great music, and most importantly, some of the best level design I've ever seen in a Sonic game. 
That's why this game earns a... 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Also, make sure you check out my friend Rabid Platypus's review of the Genesis version of Sonic the Hedgehog.